Nagharap kanina ang Ateneo Blue Eagles at ang De La Salle Green Archer sa Game 2 ng UAP Men's Basketball Finals. Isang panalo na lang ang kailangan ng Ateneo para makuha ang titulo. Habang must-win game naman ito para sa Lasal na gusto pang maglaro sa linggo. Tulad noong Game 1, maganda ulit ang naging simula ng Ateneo sa laban. At lamang sila 32-15 to sa pagtatapos ng first quarter. Umabot pa nga sa 21 points ang lamang ng Ateneo bago nakabawi ang Lasal at nailapit ang score sa halftime 51-42. to Pero pagdating sa second half, biglang nanlamig ang opensa ng Blue Eagles. Habang nagsimula namang uminit ang atake ng Green Archers sa panguna ni Nabenambala at Richie Rivero. Natapos ang third quarter na lamang ang Lasal 68 to 49 or 59. Sa fourth quarter, sinubukang humabol ng Ateneo at naidikit nila ang score sa 70 to 74. Pero isang 11 to 2 run ang pinakawalan ng Lasal para maipreserba ang kanilang lamang at makuha ang game 2. 92 to 83. Nanguna para sa defending champion si Ben Ambala with 20 points habang naka 18 points naman si Richie Rivero. Nasayang naman ang 20 points ni 30 Ravenna para sa Blue Eagles. Muling magharap ang Lasal at Ateneo sa Game 3 ng UAP Season 80 Men's Basketball Finals ngayong linggo, December 3 sa Araneta Coliseum. Pinangalanan na ang mga pinakamagagaling na men's basketball players ng UAAP Season 80. Hinirang bilang UAP Most Valuable Player sa ikalawang sunod na taon ng De La Salle big man na si Ben Mbala. Ngayong Season 80, nag-average ng 26 points, 13 rebounds at mahigit 2 blocks per game si Mbala para sa defending champions. Si Mbala rin ang hinirang bilang bankable player of the season at most efficient player of the season. Pasok rin si Mbala sa UAP Season 80 Mythical 5 kasama si Richie Rivero, Alvin Pasaol, JJ Alejandro, at 30 Ravenna. Now let's get instant analysis ng Game 2 ng UAP Finals. Kasama natin ang dating UST Tigers hotshot na si Christian Luanzon. Chris, welcome back to the score and you're looking spiffy tonight. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you. <laughs> Chris, I want to ask you, how does Ateneo lose a 21-point lead in a potential series closer? Well, what you like about that game, uh, you got to give credit to Lasal. Uh, hindi sila huminto maglaro. They kept playing, led by Ben Mbala. But I thought the catalyst for that run was, you know, Kim Montalbo. You know, his play, that awesome play inbound, uh, out of bounds under Aliyub to Ben, really started it all. Then, you know, Kim pressuring the basketball with their patented mayhem defense, forced a couple turnovers, got a couple layups. You know, that yung run nila, bago matapos yung first half, 10-0 run. You know, gave them such a big, you know, boost. Obviously, going into the second half, because it's a halftime, Anton. Mm. If you're down by 20, in a, uh. and we talked about this earlier, um, if you're down by 20, halftime elimination game. Hindi mo na alam kono ni isip ng mga players kahit ano sabi ng coaches. So I think that run before that the, the half was so huge that it carried on to the second half, and then Andre Caracut responded, and then Richie Rivero, you know, after almost. Crying from mm -hmm. rejoicing mm -hmm. to ah, from uh, tears in his eyes, then to rejoicing in the second half, and then Ben Mbala just you know being in beast mode once again compared to game one. Lakin bagay. This time it was the MVP Ben Mbala that showed up in this final series. That's nung game number one. Usap usapan nga na seven attempts lang ang uh, nakuha ni Ben Mbala, but here he had 15 attempts, 20 points to lead La Salle to victory. But Richie Rivero, you you mentioned an emotional moment for him. Really came right. back and. His shooting percentage from the field was very impressive. 8 out of 11. What can you say about this kid growing up like this in the finals? Well, let's not forget, you know, Richie is only a sophomore. And basically, you could say that this is his first time in the finals, although, you know, obviously he was with the team last year as a rookie. But we all know that last year, the one leading that ship was mm -hmm. Jeron Teng. So this, this makes it a first-time experience for Richie, especially in terms of the minutes that he's getting. I mean, what more can you ask? Sophomore, mythical five, mm -hmm. and then shows up in today's ball game, had an array of moves, side, that, side, that sidestep moves, okay? <laughs> uh, seems not to, uh, uh, parang hindi pa natatapos simula nung start ng season. So this kid, just, you know, just a high ceiling. And what I like about him, oh, their team uh, in this game, is that sinalusyon ng mga kampi niya. I thought Ben Mbala, from start, whether they had, uh, they were, uh, they were down by 20, 
up to the middle na lamang ang Ateneo and up to lumamang sila just kept playing. I thought that was key for them. And you mentioned players stepping up. Si Andre Karakot na hindi nakascore sa game number one. Naka 13 points was adjudged as player of the game mm -hmm. earlier in the coverage. But let's shift our attention to Ateneo. How can they prevent something like that in game number three? Let's say lumamang ulit sila ng ganung kalaki, 21 points. How do they prevent a momentum-changing 10-0 to zero run na ginawa ng Lasal kanina? Well, they gotta flush it down the toilet, basically. Mm -hmm. And short-term memory ang key dyan. And... I know it's easier said than done, but you know the good thing about their loss today is that nakauna sila ng game one, and right now it's basically even. Steven, pagdating ng game three, um, they have about three days to adjust, you know, to regain back their strength and refocus emotionally and go back to the to the drawing board. Although, uh, frankly, I don't think that that matters that much. No, I think what's going to be key is yung. Uh, yung in-game adjustments ng coaches because you can expect a very emotional and physical game on Sunday. Do you see any player from Ateneo perhaps coming out of nowhere and, and stepping up and making an impact in the decider on Sunday? Well, nobody in particular. Siguro, I've been saying this all season long. I'm just waiting for 30 to, to have a parang stamp game. When I say mm. stamp game, yung parang a 30 game. Like mm. a, at least a 25 to 30 uh -huh. game. You know, he's been the most consistent guy for them. Mythical team this year. Second in the MVP. But, you know, he, he hasn't had a game where he, uh -huh. he exploded for like 27 points, 15 uh -huh. rebounds. Probably now is the time. At uh, sigurado ako, Chris, na ang buong Ateneo community, they're also praying for something like that from 3rd de Ravenna this coming Sunday. Pero sa Lasal side naman, uh, Chris, do you think that because of this win in game number two, the momentum ha has shifted back to their side at sila na ngayon ang paborito dito coming into game number three? Well, as the Barker uh, Rolly announced after the game, siguro kasi hindi pa natatalo ang Lasal sa Araneta Coliseum oh, this season. He, he announced wow. it right after the game. And, um, but more than that, you know, um, I, I don't think it translate to what you said in terms of momentum okay because yung pagita kasi tatlong araw mm. and it's basically elimination game for games for both teams i think what's key in, in this deciding game in this do or die game on sunday is the team you look if you look at game one anton okay ateneo dictated and we're talking about two teams who have a contrast style of play okay. ateneo more deliberate lasal fast pace mm. first game ateneo win low scoring ball game i think it was 76 70 yep that's right. Second game, Lasal wins, 92. I think they reached... 92-83. Uh, well, it was a high-scoring game. Mm. Anytime you have a high-scoring game, it favors Lasal. Low-scoring game okay. favors Ateneo. I think the team who dic dictates in the first half will win that. See, will, will, will win the championship. Wow. Uh, so it has come down to this, Chris. Isang laro na lang para malaman natin kung sino Bilis magiging kampion <laughs> ng, uh, ng season 80. But... Um, any more surprises that you envision happening na hindi pa natin nakikita dito sa season na ito? Meron ba? Is there anything you can think of? I would say for, for Lasal, probably Jologo. Uh, okay. Because in the, in the first round, if they won that game, he would have been the best player in that game. Had a huge okay. third quarter. They end up, end up losing. Uh, he's been a type of, he has a type of season na hindi siya masyado ginagamit. Mm. And then pag ginagamit siya, up he comes up with yeah. big shots. Mm. And for Ateneo, you know, like I said earlier, it, it's, it's, I think it's 30. Mm. You know, I, um, we all know that he's a very multi-skilled, talented player, mm. especially on the defensive end. Can he dominate on the offensive end and take charge when it matters the most, especially down the stretch? So, based on what you said, perhaps uh, Jolo Go bounces back from his uh, three-minute outing today, no points, and maybe 30 will get more than 27 or 25, as well, you mentioned. Well, he reminds me of Henry Ong, if you remember, from USD before. Na, who broke a lot of LaSalle hearts. He would, you know, shoot maybe five five feet beyond the arc and then it would be the biggest shot of the game. You know, si Jolo medyo may ganong capability. Mm. But he has to see some time of, uh, on the floor, obviously. But who knows, maybe. All right, we'll see what happens on game number three. Maraming salamat, Christian. It's great to have you back here on The Score. Thank you. For more sports updates, keep watching The Score. And don't forget to subscribe.